Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out the Tough Liquid 360 ARGB Sync Liquid CP Cooler from Thermaltake, which was released in mid-2021. Now, earlier this year, I actually published a big 316 millimeter all-in-one liquid CPU cooler shootout, which came before this cooler hit the market. And in that shootout, which I'm gonna link right up here, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 was the dominant contender on a noise normalized basis. It was followed by the Deep Cool Castle 360EX and then the Corsair H150i Pro XT. Now, I always do decibel normalized testing because I wanna incentivize manufacturers and consumers like you to think about performance beyond just maximum RPM because that just leads to an arms race where every manufacturer is gonna use the fastest RPM fans it can get its hands on and that's not doing anyone any favors. So again, decibel normalized results is what I'm concerned about in this review and you're gonna see that in my benchmarks. I will also include the maximum RPM benchmarks but that's not what I draw my conclusions on. Now the reason I was particularly interested in this cooler and doing a, a, a sort of follow-up review here kind of an addendum to my shootout is that it features a fan that's done really well in my roundups and that's the Tough Fan 12 from Thermaltake. Now this is based on an existing design. Some people would call it a copy of the Nectar NF A12 X25, but frankly, it's really based on a much older fan design, the Nidex Servo Gentle Typhoon. And not a lot of liquid coolers these days actually come with this fan design. All right, you know, Noctua doesn't make liquid coolers, and while a lot of people will buy Noctua fans for the liquid coolers, I wanted to test a cooler right out of the box with this type of fan. And look, a lot of manufacturers are jumping on the bandwagon now that I and a number of the other reviewers have noted how well these work on radiators. It's kind of funny it took this long to for them to all pick up on this, but all sorts of manufacturers are doing clones of this fan at this point. And, you know, I'm not pointing fingers at all. I'm saying, hey, this is actually a pretty good design. It's got nine blades. That's kind of what makes it distinct from other fans. It works well on a radiator. So that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see benchmarks of this cooler with this type of fan. I don't think there's anything new about the radiator specifically in the Tough Liquid series. They've really just updated it with these fans. And I think that's a perfect reason to release a new product because these fans are totally different from the fans Thermaltake previously used on their all-in-one liquid coolers. Now this also comes in a 240 millimeter model and right now the prices are a little bit higher than I would have expected these to launch at. This is 190, the 240 is 150. And you may say, hey, that's all I needed to hear. I'm not gonna watch the rest of this video, but I want you to hear me out here and frankly hear out Thermaltake and give it a chance to impress you in the benchmarks. The reason is that I think that Thermaltake has been a victim of increasing costs throughout 2021. And of course, releasing this in mid-2021 meant they had to factor in those costs. I'm talking about freight. I'm talking about materials and manufacturing costs. I'm talking about tariffs. So it's competing against a number of other coolers released in 2019 and 2020 that may not have factored those things into their prices, but that doesn't mean those aren't gonna go up in price eventually. So you may say $190 for this cooler is too much, but Thermaltake may be able to lower that over time or its competitors may have to raise their prices. So let's put aside the price for now and let's just get into what this cooler can offer. So first I'm gonna show you the details of this cooler. I'm gonna give you a couple installation tips and then we'll get into those benchmarks. Here's the Tough Liquid 360 straight out of the box. You can see there's plastic film protecting the mirror finish on the pump and we do have one cable pre-attached for the pump header and then a separate cable here for the ARGB sync feature. A couple things distinguish this cooler from a number of the other all-in-ones I've tested, including the use of a custom backplate. It does not use the AMD backplate provided with all motherboards. Similarly, you're gonna see that it has a much bigger cold plate. This is about 58 millimeters by 58 millimeters square, whereas most competitors measure it at 40 centimeters square. Here's what the Tough Liquid 360 looks like, fully assembled with the three Tough Fan 12 fans attached and the included three-in-one PWM splitter connected. While the cooler does include a small tube of thermal paste, I used Nocto NTH2 as I do with all my high-end cooler reviews, figuring that people buying high-end coolers will buy high-end paste. Okay, now that I've shown you around this cooler, let's get it installed. But one thing I wanna mention is, in the shots that follow, you're gonna see this cooler paired up with a new RAM kit from Thermaltake. It's Tough Ram RGB Turquoise kit. This is a DDR4 3600 kit that is actually colored turquoise. So that's beyond just the RGB lighting. I thought this was really interesting to give people choice in the way 
that their PC looks, kind of their aesthetic flair beyond just RGB. Of course, you do get RGB lighting in this RAM kit and it actually looks pretty good. So let's take a look at that now. Here's the Tough Liquid installed showcasing the default ARGB effects you'll get on the pump. And here it is with it synced to my RAM and motherboard. I've got kind of a purple pink motif going on here. And you can see it actually looks really good with that Tough RAM kit. Let me give you a closer look at that kit here. This is definitely a unique aesthetic and you'll either love it or hate it, but I give Thermaltake props for trying something different with its industrial design. Although I must admit the turquoise color kind of gets lost in the shuffle. All right, it's time for the benchmark. So without further ado, let's see how the Tough Liquid does against its main competitors. I'm gonna start here with the idle benchmarks. And the point here is to show you what the experience of the cooler is at minimum RPM and a minimum noise level. The thermal take avails itself quite well, despite having a minimum RPM that's around 500, that's fairly high, it's extremely quiet thanks to the high quality of the fans and the low noise of the pump that allows it to idle just as silently as the other liquid coolers that typically have lower RPM fans and it's quieter than my two air coolers here. So that's something that a lot of folks probably don't realize if they are used to liquid coolers of old. Yes, I know a lot of the original issue liquid coolers were really loud at idle, but modern liquid coolers can be just as quiet, if not quieter than air cooler at idle, which is partly because the radiator itself acts as a noise blocker. It absorbs that noise coming out of the top of the chassis. Now let's get into the load benchmark, starting with CPU-Z, which is a moderate load, similar to a gaming engine, running at maximum RPM on the fan. So this is not my recommended setting. This is what the coolers will max out at. So here the Thermaltake Tough Liquid 360 does really, really well. It's among the coolest in this roundup, 64 degrees and 44 on the VRMs. And yet it's also among the quietest of the liquid coolers coming below the Corsair and deep cool by quite a bit. It's not as quiet as the Arctic here, but it does have a little bit more thermal headroom coming in a degree lower. So I consider this a very good balance thus far, but let's get into my maximum load benchmark. So here we're using the Cinebench R20 benchmark. It really puts a lot of strain on the CPU. And again, I'm using maximum RPM just to show you what the maximum threshold of these coolers is. Not surprisingly, based on the previous benchmark, the Tough Liquid 360 is performing incredibly well here. It's still 40 decibels, and yet it's the second coolest. It's cooler than the Arctic. It's cooler than the deep cool. It's cooler than the air coolers. It's only beaten by the intolerably loud Corsair H150i, which runs at 53 decibels. But what really matters to me is decibel normalized performance. I'm going to show you that now. Turning back to CPU-Z, which is my moderate load benchmark, here I have all the coolers normalized to 35 decibels measured at two feet from the system. And the Thermaltake Tough Liquid is again in second place, but this time it falls to the Arctic and is just ahead of the Corsair and Deepcool and a few steps ahead of the two air coolers. Now getting to my final test, again, 35 decibels, normalized, but running Cinebench R20, which is a maximum load, we see the Tough Liquid turn in its least impressive performance. Now it's tied with the deep cool and behind the Arctic and just barely ahead of the Noctua NHD 15. I think that part of the problem is that the nine blade design fan that it's using, which is so similar to the Noctua NF A12X25 and the Nidex Servo Gentle Typhoon, really does lose a little bit of its stature when you lower that RPM off the maximum, typically around 2000 RPM. Here it's at around 1500. Keep in mind that it was ahead of the deep cool at much lower noise levels when running at max. This blade design simply has a sweet spot that's fairly narrow and you have to take that into consideration. But luckily, the Tough Fan 12 is very well composed. I'm going to share with you some audio clips here just to prove that there's nothing untoward about its behavior. And for comparison purposes, I'll include the Deepcool Castle 360EX, the Thermaltake's closest competitor, to show you just how different these two coolers sound, even at a normalized 35 decibels.
All right, based on those benchmarks, if I were to go back in time and include this in my roundup that I conducted earlier this year, it would come in second place based on performance. It was just behind the Corsair on a maximum RPM basis and just behind the Arctic on a noise normalized basis. Now let's consider a few other factors. How about ease of use, aesthetics, and price? Ease of use definitely weighs in Thermaltake's favor. It's a really great installation. There's just three cables you need to connect. The PWM connector for your pump. You also have the PWM connector for your three-way splitter for your fans that's included in the box. And then you have the ARGB connector for the ARGB header on your motherboard for the lighting controls. Now you also have manual controls on the pump, which was a pretty unique feature. I've never seen that on a cooler. That's a lot better than the old style breakout boxes that I've used in the past. But overall, I'm not gonna give many points to Thermaltake for that because hey, ARGB sync is in the name of this cooler and that's the feature that I used. I love that feature. I love to be able to control everything via my motherboard. So paying extra for the manual controls kind of seems out of place for a model that's marketed as ARGB sync. I would love to see Thermaltake release this cooler without those manual controls, potentially at a lower price. And I'll get to price in a moment. Let's also talk about aesthetics. Now, like a lot of coolers that I've tested recently, this has ARGB features on the pump, but not on the fans. I think that's more important because if you want ARGB, you want it right in the center of your system. It's very classy, it's tasteful, and even if you don't like the TT logo, basically it blends into your system and it just provides some ambient lighting. I think it looks really good. Let's talk about price though. $190. That is really tough. I'm sorry, Thermaltake. You are competitive against a number of coolers that I've tested at the $130 price point. So at that point, I'd have to say, Look, unless you really love the style of this cooler or you can't get those other coolers, the Deep Cool or the Arctic in your region or they're much more expensive for some reason, I'd have to kind of pass on this model and recommend one of those other two models. Now, there is the feature of compatibility with cases that is an issue for Arctic. I always have to raise this. People buy these Arctic coolers with the extra thick radiators that gives it that advantage and then find it doesn't fit in their cases. So Thermaltake is using standard sized components, the radiator and the fans are all standard thickness. So you don't have any compatibility issues here. If your case is designed for standard 360 millimeter coolers, this one will fit. So that does weigh in its favor, but we still compete against the deep cool, which is a whole lot cheaper. So basically my recommendations from earlier this year stand. The Arctic is my number one choice, followed by deep cool. If in your region the thermal take is more competitive on price, then go for the thermal take. The fans are excellent. The whole cooler is excellent. It's just a little bit too expensive in the United States at this point for me to give it a full recommendation. Now, if you have any questions about my results or my conclusions, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.